Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar channel. This week we're going to continue to disassemble. We're going to take out some battery modules, do some a little bit of electrical testing, and then we'll probably move on to some more bodywork. So let's get to it. All right, I uh, put the this flap down. Uh, this is really to access those battery modules. Got those four modules out. I still have the uh, big heat sink cooling plate in. Um, that might be uh, one of the areas where we're having some issues. So I might end up taking that one out as well. But uh, just thought I'd show. Um, I don't really see any leaks or anything down the bottom of the battery tray. So that's good. Um, on the battery pack one, I'm going to isolate my cooling plates as well. So I'm going to take those ones off, probably leave the battery modules in place, but just take the top off and see if I can insulate it from the rest of the chassis. Okay, so what I thought I'd do while everything's apart, um, I've got the two cooling plates here. Um, I thought I'd just add a little bit of extra electrical insulation. Um, so the brackets that hold them, um, I thought maybe I'd just put a rubber pad on and then put everything back together. But that pad I think is just a little too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these brackets and I'm going to just add, I've got some of the uh, rubberized undercoating. So I'm just gonna spray a coat of that on. Again, just to give it a little extra isolation. Um, again, this was all part of pack one. So pack one did not have any problems. But again, I just figured while everything's out, might as well take advantage. Um, one other thing of note, the anodized parts, essentially on the surface, they don't conduct, uh, meaning the anodized coating is not a conductor, uh, something else I learned. All right, I added some uh, of the rubberized undercoating. And again, uh, it, it doesn't conduct, it's not a conductor. So again, just trying to find any of those little places that might be giving me grief. Um, I don't think this was one, but better be safe. Okay, I got some cooling plates out, battery modules out, uh, brackets and things out. So this is, I think, about as far as we're gonna strip it down. So again, this is all bare, empty. Um, I believe the plate here um, is what was causing the issue. I won't know for sure until I put some fixes in place. So I'm gonna start uh, working on that. All right, uh, this is my rear cooling plate here. And um, even though the anodized surface doesn't conduct, um, if there's any scratches or nicks or even the heads of screws and things, um, so I just put a coat of the rubberized undercoating. Uh, the other thing I've got is I've got some uh, screws here that are non-conductive. So I'm gonna fasten that to the chassis. 
um, before essentially if I touch the chassis and touch like um, one of the connectors like the coolant connectors that goes inside that would conduct so I don't know again I could see this acting as a big capacitor um, building up a lot of charge and then um, again when you turn on the car or other things it kind of immediately discharges. I don't know if that's going on, but there's a way to just try and isolate further any electrical issues. I guess I should mention that's the uh, side that goes against the chassis. The other side still that can essentially go to that so we can get adequate cooling with the uh, battery modules. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm going to put uh, this cooling plate, these brackets kind of back in the car. So we won't be able to really uh, test anything until we get the controller back hopefully next week fingers crossed but um, I'll go ahead and put those brackets on put the clean plate on make sure I don't have any um, connectivity or continuity between the rear cooling plate and the chassis same with these other ones All right, that took way longer than I thought. So um, when I put this on, again, it's got uh, the rubberized coating and everything. So everything on the outside is fine. However, in the holes, when I would put the plate on, just the threads would kind of tend to rub a spot where it's bare metal again. So what I did is I got some of this uh, kind of rubber tubing here, put it on the thread. So it kind of stuck out through this hole and then essentially tighten it down. And so the other thing it kind of does is it kind of acts like a, I don't know, a little bushing here as well. So meaning when I clamp it down tight, I don't have this metal scratching on that. So now I actually have an open loop. So no continuity between like this connector and here. Where before I would have continuity, meaning that somewhere on this plate, it would be touching and getting into there and Anyway, that's what I was trying to avoid. So now we are free. Okay, so I've got the uh, rear plate back in. However, um, before I even tried to bolt it to things, um, I think I've just worn away enough of the anodization that it's kind of rubbing on the on the frame, like there, and I don't know other places. But so, I mean, before I even bolt it, we've got um, continuity between like here and the frame. So I may just have to take it out and. I don't know, grind away, find some way to make sure it's not touching anywhere. We have the same issue with this uh, bracket on the other side. So again, as I was putting it down in place, it's just kind of scraping away um, some of the rubberized undercoating they put on. So again, it's making continuity there on this one. So I'll just have to find a way for both these to uh, make that better. All right, I am stoked. I got this back plate in and we have no continuity um, between you know, like say some of these open screws or the connectors and the frame, which we had before. So the non-conductive screws, 
I think we're the key there and as well as just making sure we got clearance everywhere and it's being held um, anyway everything's everything's looking good so I just have this one thing here that I've got to fix and like I said I I'm not sure how the best way to do this is I think I just need to get a little more clearance so I don't know if I'm gonna grind it I can cut it and re-weld it um, I'll think on it but uh, should be able to do it pretty quick and get it on and then cooling plates will be um, isolated from the frame I think the cooling plates were potentially a cause of again being like a capacitor being so close to the battery it builds up a charge and then where it's actually um, connected to the frame uh, where it's got continuity to the frame I'm thinking that may have been some of the issues but uh, time will tell when we get the controller back but for now we'll work on this last one to get it uh, so it's not so it has no continuity with the frame a while ago I ordered this diode this is for my 12 volt system so my the way I had wired it everything worked okay but with my passive keyless entry when I would get in range um, it would send a signal to my car, you know, to just beep the horn or unlock the doors. And that 12 volt signal would also turn on my car. Oh. So it would do this before where it would just turn it on. So I need to get the diode. So this is really just a way to prevent uh, any random 12 volt signal turning on my car. Okay, so I got my uh, diode there soldered in place. Um, this is one of those things that when I'm in the middle of electrical, I kind of feel pretty good about where I am. And then a couple months go by and I just, I start to question things. So at the time I did all this, I thought for sure that that's what needed to be done. Now I'm not so sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power on the car make sure that all the systems still work, and then see if when I give it a 12 volt signal from somewhere else, make sure it doesn't turn on the car. So, wish me luck. Okay, so now we're connected to power. God, it always makes me nervous here. Well, that's good. Okay, we'll test a couple systems. Then I'll try and see if uh, I can kind of make it come on or not. Okay, so I'll just uh, just try windshield. So that one's working. Blinker maybe. So it seems like the systems are still working. Um, I'll turn the car off and then I'll do some of the things that used to turn it on. Okay, I reconnected my passive keyless entry. That was one of the things that used to turn on the car all the time. So we're gonna see if we get in range, if it turns it on. I heard the click click, but did not turn on the car. So now if we're in range. Yay. So we'll go out of range. Make sure it goes the click click. So I heard the click click. I'm gonna get out of range here, it should go beep. Okay, so now again we'll go back in range. Yay, click, click. And it didn't turn on, I think we got it solved. All right, big thumbs up. All right, uh, my shipment of the controller got stopped by customs, so it will not be coming back uh, this week. So that will not be a Christmas present. We'll look for that in the new year. So we'll find some other things to work on. All right, I'm going to start on the shell on this side. Um, just cutting out and trying to prepare that piece to laminate in. So we'll see how we do.
Okay, um, as I was working, I pulled a cord that tipped the camera so you couldn't see all that, but basically just cut out the profile, top and bottom. Um, I think I've got everything pretty well matched up. So I think what I'll do now is I'll hot glue, I'll hot glue this in place and um, then start uh, essentially laying fiberglass from the inside. All right, so I laminated uh, like three or four sheets on this side as well as that side. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to get at all the places, but um, I think we got it pretty good. So we'll let it set up and then we'll start kind of trimming all the excess off and then filling from the outside, trying to make it look good. Okay, got it in place. Um, fiberglass from the other side. I did a little bit of the uh, short strand fiberglass filler where I had a little bit, uh, some bigger gaps to fill and then just did the lightweight filler and sand it all down. So I believe we're ready. I'm, I'll probably just throw a coat of uh, the high fill primer on and I don't know if I'll do more sanding. I might do a little bit more, but that's probably where I'll leave it. All right, here it is. Uh, got the, just a, uh, couple coats of the high fill primer on and in general it looks pretty good um, I think I can see maybe one or two spots I need still need to touch up just uh, with some sanding but uh, I think this is where we're gonna leave it for today I'm pretty pleased with the way it looks so again thanks for everyone's help and their comments please feel free to give me some additional comments uh, so when I do the other side I can improve further all right, uh, that does it for this week. Uh, I did find out that our package got delivered, so it's out of customs. It's in the hands of EV Controls. So hopefully uh, things work out and we see it back uh, maybe next week. See if things get stuck in customs again. But that'll do it for this week. See you next week.